Hey guys, I'm back again. I'm here to do another tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make a necklace using stencils. So I already conditioned um, my black Primo. I conditioned it on the third thickest sitting on my pasta machine. And I'm going to be using um, some stencils. You can use any stencil you want. But this one is from um, Folk Art and they got different different ones they got the circle ones they got different shapes triangle I'm going to be using let's see I'm going to be using this one right here I'm going to be using this one. All right, now you're going to be using, I'm going to be using mica powders. Um, this is Pearl X. I'm going to be using three colors. This is the color Misty Lavender, 688 Misty Lavender. 673 Interference Violet. And 693 Dew Violet Brass. And they're all from um, Pearl X. And you're going to need a brush and paper towel to clean your brush in, brush in between. So when I condition my clay, I um, grab a plain, plain printing paper and just went like this to like smooth it out. Just a little bit. Now you're going to place your stencil on top of the black clay. Just put it over here. Make sure it's center. And make sure it's stuck on the clay pretty good but don't do it too hard you don't want to make sure it's stuck in there all right so i'm going to start with this one now uh, misty lavender and it doesn't have to be in a particular order of color i'm just using this one first and then you're going to use your brush and just start painting it on the on the clay and you also can use for this technique you can use paints um, you can use chalk pastels there's the different things you can use for this I'm going to go to the next color I'll be using violet interference violet this colors this thing looks white but it looks when you put it on here it looks totally different I mean, when you put it on the black, it looks violet, but when you look at it, the powder looks white. So it's very deceiving. It's totally different color. I mean, it looks different when you put it on, on the clay. Make sure you close your lid because you don't want to spill stuff all over the place. I'm going to use, use the other one. This is the dual violet brass. This one has a little bit like, like a copper color, well like a brass color. And it looks different when you put it on the clay too. So I'm going to continue with the rest 
and applying the color, color all over the clay and then I'll be back. Alright, so I'm, I'm done placing all the mica powders on the stencil, on the clay. I'm going to lift this up very carefully. Get it out of the way. So now I'm going to use another color of clay. Um, using, I'm going to use Purple Pearl Primo. I already conditioned it on my third thickest sitting on my past machine, and I texture it with the sanding paper, uh, 60 grit. I'm going to be using that. I'm going to bring over the cutters. Got this set of cutters. This is from Mellon New York. Um, so I'm going to be cutting this. Uh, let's see. Let's find it's got in the center, and then make sure when you don't want to put your finger in here because if you do that, it's gonna smush all the mica powder so you just want to push up and just don't even touch it because yeah you'll just mess up all the the design I'm gonna cut another one two Push it up very slowly because you don't want to touch it. <laughs> and then just cut another one. Okay, now you're going to cut, so we got the big cutter here, let me just get this out of the way, and I'm going to cut in the middle, so I'm going to cut one here. Because this one's going to be in the middle. And then this is going to be inside this. This is a very tricky part because I don't really want to touch it, but. And this is going to be in the middle of this in the center. And then it's going to be th do the same for the other ones. Just this one.
the same one for this one. And for this one too. I'm back soon. I'm gonna put the back on this pieces. I already rolled this on my basset machine on the third thick setting and I texture on the back with the sanding paper. Then I'm gonna use my cutters. Oh, I'm looking for the blade. Oops, this is so place this in the middle. You can always after you bake it, if you don't like the the size, you can fix it, adding a little more uh, more clay, or you can add a border. You can also smooth it a little bit with your fingers, but you don't want to touch it too much because once you put it on, you bake it. You don't want it to be. If you move it too much, and then when it bakes, it bakes like if it's not straight. So you don't want to touch it too much. Okay, I'm going to bring this one. And do the same one, same thing I did. Press down. bake this for about an hour. Uh, Primo recommendation, temperature two, which is 275. And I cut an extra piece um, to put on the side, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna add it or not. I was thinking about using this. Um, and I'm gonna add it at the end. So I will see you back after I bake this. All right, I'm back. So uh, all the pieces are baked. Now it's time to resin this. Um, the resin that I'm using, it's a two-part resin. This is called the Amazing Clear Cast, part A and part B. I got this at my local Michaels, but I'm sure there's other kinds of resin you can buy. And you gotta mix A and B. Um, equal amounts and then you gotta mix it um, for like two to three minutes until you see no swirls and you make sure you scrape the bottom and the sides so now I'm gonna pour this it actually takes like 18 to 24 hours to cure completely now I'm gonna start pouring this a little bit not too much And then with the skewer, just move it around. And you always start with a little bit, um, small amount because you don't want it to spill. And then just pull it to the edges. a little bit more and 
and you can also use uh, one part um, resin you only need a UV light I use it on my other tutorials and that one is just takes like 20 minutes to cure and some people um, when I started using doing polymer clay I um, I used this two-part resin I mean it takes longer but if you're doing a lot of pieces this is better because you have more resin to work with and you can cure more um, you do more like pieces the other one it's a little bit expensive but you can cure it faster in the same day this takes like maybe 24 hours so just keep moving it around until you get to the edges just keeps moving and then you're gonna see some bubbles on the top and you can just get a um, straw and blow it and then the bubbles will pop I'm gonna finish with the rest of the other pieces and I'm gonna oh and you're gonna need a silicone mat I got this a long time ago I think it was Amazon I'm not, I don't remember definitely gonna need one of these big ones so you can put them all um, and they if they spilled um, they when they dry it will cure to um, it's better if using like paper so I recommend getting a mat like this really big mat so I'm gonna finish this and I will let it cure it's gonna take like maybe 24 hours you it makes a difference when it's like warmer weather I guess if you have the sun you can leave it outside but I recommend it covering it because you don't want the wind blowing and then you know it's gonna get all dirty with dust or you can put it by the window too um, but uh, yeah it takes it takes a little bit to cure and depends if it's if it's a warm weather that will determine how fast it will cure so I will finish this and I'll be back in about 24 hours when this is done I'll see you then hello I'm back so this is already um, cured now it's time to open the drill holes so I had a, I have a hand drill um, I already opened the, on this side. I'm just gonna open it. Just have to put it on the tile and see how you want it. How you want it to look. I'm gonna use chains. 
and you need some jump rings, a hand drill, and pliers. So now you're going to drill this. This hand drill has a different uh, drills for different sizes. You just have to find the one. They got thicker ones, more like smaller ones. So this is like a medium size. Now you're going to Let's drill about right here because it's Just gonna just center. Sometimes the steel will not stay in place. I don't know why. When I'm drilling it, it just goes all the way in. I don't know why that happens. It's kind of frustrating sometimes. Okay, and then you're just gonna start drilling. Just kind of make sure, make sure you have your fingers and just, we'll just drill through. I'm just going to do this one. So very slippery. Okay, I'm going to continue drilling this and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm done drilling the holes. Now we're going to place the jump rings so you can get it pliers and jump rings. This, these ones are big. You need big ones depending on the thickness and this is pretty thick so and then you need chains you can use any type of core you want but I'm gonna use chains today now you're gonna grab your pliers and then put this through the hole Close it.
I got two more. And just kind of grab your chain and just put it through the jump ring. Oops, can get it in there. And then make sure you close the jump ring. And now we're just going to do this other side. Now you're going to need a clasp, there's different ones out there. This one, you only need one small jump ring and that's it. Just The side. This one is a little bit hard to open. I mean, using my fingers sometimes. It's better if you use the pliers because that's gonna hurt your finger. But and just close this. So there's the necklace. And make sure you um, the gem ring. This shows on the back. Make sure there. This one too. And you can just twist it around. There you have it. Um, so that's it. I hope you like this tutorial. Please subscribe if you have any um, any questions. Write it on the on the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. And just please subscribe so I can do more tutorials. And well, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.